Well, welcome once again to Artbrick, everyone, and a special welcome to our artists who have come down to uh, participate with us. It's great to see you all here. So, well, Kalamazoo is fortunate to have uh, many art organizations that are dedicated to making art relevant uh, and accessible for not only individuals, but the community at large. But uh, MRC Artworks is really a, a unique organization among all these. It is a studio space, a gallery, and also a retail outlet that uh, serves developmentally, <clears throat> excuse me, and intellectually impaired individuals, those with brain injuries, as well as other disabilities. And as many of you may know, it's located right downtown on Kalamazoo Mall. The focus of MRC is not only on art as a creative outlet for self-expression, but also using it as a way of building confidence and a sense of accomplishment for these individuals. And I think equally important, it's a way that uh, uh, the artist uh, can create something that is uh, shared with and appreciated by the rest of the community as you'll see as part of their, their, uh, their program. To tell us more about MRC, we're very fortunate to have with us Amy Phil. Amy has been the uh, manager of the artwork since 2017. Uh, her background is both in psychology and art. And prior to working with MRC, she was an early child consultant with the local child care resource center. And I should add too that she's also a practicing artist. So at this point, please welcome Amy Phil. Hi everyone, thank you for having me. Um, thank you, Greg, for the nice introduction. Hopefully I don't repeat some of those points again. Um, but I will share a little bit about our program, just a little snippet about me, um, and really like to highlight our artists today. So the title of our presentation today is Art That Works. I am part of MRC Industries. MRC Artworks is one of the programs that MRC Industries runs. Again, I'm Amy Phil. Uh, I am a Kalamazoo Portage native, so I grew up in Portage. Uh, went to school at Portage Northern, big in the art uh, field there. I moved away, uh, came back, moved away again, and came back again. We always say that Kalamazoo brings you back. My background is in fine arts and in psychology. I was uh, received my degree from Central Michigan University in psychology. My fine arts background, I went to Detroit for the College for Creative Studies, and I went to Grand Rapids for Kendall School of Art and Design. Artworks is one of those perfect meshes of both the psychology end and the fine art end. I get to work with people on a daily basis and I get paid to do art. So it's a beautiful, beautiful compilation of both. I have two little boys. One's not so little anymore. He's 14, so I'm gonna have a high schooler next year. And I have a nine-year-old who also thinks he's 14 because he has an older brother. We have a rescue dog named Duffy who barely makes around the block, but we love him so. He's perfect for our house. And I am a practicing artist as well. I like to say I'm a photo representational artist. I focus on landscapes, plain air work, nature, but I really dabble in uh, abstract, uh, quick drawings, quick sketches, quick paintings. And that I can attribute to my time at Artworks. Uh, they really challenge me to explore different forms of work, different applications of material. So it's this beautiful, mutual inspiration. I am honored and thankful to be part of such a wonderful program. For our participants at home, be aware this is a little bit different of an art break. Here, you can't see, but we have tables set out, and on the tables we have materials. I invite all, all of our participants here to join us in the activities that, that will help illustrate points as I go through the presentation. For the, those of you at home, if you want to participate in, in a similar form, permanent marker, scrap fabric, or paper or pencil. We're gonna do a scratch art activity. And then finally, we're gonna do a yarn wrapped heart. So pipe cleaners and yarn. Anything else will work because that's how we work it at Artworks. Whatever we have on hand, we make it work. So without further ado, I'll get started. 
I always like to have some goals and objectives. My hope is at the end of the presentation, we ha will have accomplished the goals and objectives. Given time, I may check in with all of you. I would like to have a Q&A at the end for any questions that may have come up. There is a permanent marker there. You could maybe scratch on our scratch paper any questions that come to you along the way. Uh, so please feel free to write down some thoughts that you might wanna ask later. The goals and objectives are, we will learn about MRC and MRC artworks. We will know how we connect to the community and are included. So not only artworks, but hopefully you as participants as well. We're gonna practice the act of positivity and sharing of kindness. And finally, we're gonna feel compelled to share your individual gifts with the world. I can't make you have that feeling, but I hope I can impress you to build on that feeling. In our slides, there's gonna be images of work that the artists have created or participated in creating. My hope is to identify those items, talk about the materials, talk about the method, and perhaps on occasion talk about the artists. Our artists are present today. There will be an opportunity where I will introduce them as a group. If we have extra time, I will introduce them as individuals. Right now, here's your hello. Uh, this is a new project that my staff had introduced to our artists, hand sewn items, needle and thread. Rather than regular thread, we use flossing thread, a little thicker. Rather than uh, uh, regular needle, we use a yarn needle or an upholstery needle, so it's a little bit bigger of an eye. And we use felt, and it's attached to a dowel rod. A lot of the messages we share are encouraging, they're welcoming, they're bright, and a little bit contemporary. So it's, it's a popular imagery, popular design right now to do these banners. Who we are, and that is a total pun, and I didn't mean to do it, which adds to the bonus factor of the pun. Uh, so we're gonna talk about who we are as as a group, who we are as an organization. And I want you to reflect on yourself as who you are, who you are in this community, who you are as maybe an artist or as a patron, and um, hopefully have a couple more puns in the way. I don't know, we'll see. So this piece, an artist, is present in the picture. Uh, our artists are protected individuals, meaning that their identities, their history, their, their name, uh, any identifying characteristics, we cannot re release, we cannot photograph, we cannot verbally share without their prior permission. So we do have an Instagram presence and we're very conscious of if we want to include an artist without having their approval, we can hide them maybe behind a piece of artwork. So this artist did create this piece of artwork. It was with extra materials that we had in our supply closet. They had this idea of really impressing that owl point, so they included actual feathers. This artist is quite gifted. We had a moment a couple years back where she had found a piece of art that she had created many, many, many years ago. And it was a tearful moment when we saw what she had created before and how far she's come. I'm gonna try and avoid reading from slides, but honestly, I don't have the mission memorized. So the next few slides I may have to read off of there. I know many of our, our audience may also be able to read along, so feel free to. Those uh, that would like to listen may listen. MRC's mission, we are to encourage and support individuals living with a disability to achieve their fullest potential through employment, skill building, and active community involvement. And when we speak of disabilities, we aren't just talking about developmental disabilities, traumatic brain injuries. We also support individuals living with mental illness. MRC's vision is to be the provider of choice for individuals and employers through continuous improvement, innovation, and leadership. MRC's values. We exemplify these values in our interactions with everyone. Integrity, respect, compassion, diversity, commitment, accountability, and professionalism. 
I really like to point out that professionalism, my artists have probably heard me talk about it a lot. Yeah, I see heads, yeah. We create art, we show art, we sell art. We are professional artists. So when an individual comes into our gallery, if our artists are present or at work, I'm always reflecting on what that looks like. What do those interactions look like? How do we present our work in a respectful way? How do we have a professional conversation? What are professional topics? So I am proud to be surrounded by professional artists every single day, every single day. They do something that makes me so proud. MRC's guiding principles. All people have the need and ability to contribute to society. The community benefits from, from the inclusion, participation of persons with varying abilities. Everyone needs different resources and supports to fulfill their potential for optimal independence, work, self-determination, participation in the community, quality of life, and equal physical access. And that's not unique to the population we serve. That those are needs of every individual, every individual in our community, in the greater world around us. We should strive to have those principles for everyone. I realize I didn't highlight the previous two images, forgive me. Um, any of my staff are welcome to be like, hey, uh, if, I, if I forget to show an image. But this one I will highlight. Our artist is actually here today who painted that pillow. I'm not sure if he recognizes the pillow in the picture. If he does, he can raise his hand. I'm kind of looking at him. Uh, so the material here is something that was donated from a community member. The School for the Blind received these pouches, these kind of felt pouches, whole stack of them. And immediately they thought, well, we don't want to throw these out. I'm sure MRC Artworks can put them to use. So we've created pillows. We've used them to buffer between paintings when somebody makes a purchase. This artist painted a smiley face, a sunshine, and uh, we used another artist to hold the picture and spread cheer that day on our Instagram account. Around the edge, you will see hand stitching. So again, using floss and thread. MRC Artworks. So this is specific to MRC Artworks, and then I'm going to break down a little more of the history behind MRC Industries and Artworks itself. MRC Artworks, again, a program of MRC's, MRC Industries Incorporated, is an art gallery, a studio and retail store. Greg covered most of this. Uh, we make unique and affordable artwork. So I like to highlight that the work that our artists create not only is quality, but it's affordable to the masses. So we're very conscious of the fact that we live in a college town. These are young patrons, right, that are building up their art collection. And we see many of them come into artworks and are just so thrilled for original, affordable artwork. So we do really strive to make it affordable. It is an outlet for creative self-expression in a way that promotes personal growth. We're always challenging our artists to try new things. We will model a technique, give an example, show, and then we encourage them to try more. There's an artist here, and she may uh, raise her hand because I think I told her I might talk about her. So a lot of our sewn items she creates. When she first started sewing, she was not a fan of the process at all, at all. She was a painter and she wanted to be a painter, but she kept going back to it. She kept trying, and now she's very prolific at it. Her stitching is beautiful, and now she prefers to do that rather than paint, which breaks my painterly heart a little bit, but that's okay. Uh, we also use it to, to enrich the community with a diversity of art. So we participate in local art hops, we promote our artist work through a variety of venues. I will talk about what those venues are later in the presentation. All our artists receive a commission for the sale of their work, which not only serves as a source of income, but also reinforces their self-esteem and self-worth. It feels good to sell your artwork. I, as an artist, know that. I think many practicing artists know that. To have that paycheck, so work well done, work well received and it, it goes for our artists as well. 
often I'm asked, you got pay checks? Do you have checks? Um, so we do, our artists receive 75% from the sale of their work. I like to stress that that's better than gallery rates. As a working artist, I've seen the 50-50, I've even seen the 40-60, but traditionally it's 60-40, so 75% is fantastic. MRC Artworks provides a safe, positive, and creative environment that focuses on the individual's abilities rather than their disabilities. In the picture, we have one of our artists holding three different pro products. The top piece is a journal. There were, I believe, 20 or so journals. Each journal was hand-painted on the outside. This was a commission that a company called Megan for Design had come out to us and said, hey, I want to give something unique to my clients at the end of the year. So she purchased these journals and our artists came up with these different designs and hand painted them. The tote bag is something fun that we do often in our program. We try and follow maybe a similar color palette with a series of them, maybe similar designs. And finally, the little tag, which is a little hard to see, uh, that is a piece of linoleum sample that an architecture firm had donated a whole bunch of tiles and linoleum samples. One of my staff was inventive and made them into tags or ornaments. Again, professional artists. I've already expressed that. We'll kind of move on from there. Community members. So all of our artists are based either in Kalamazoo itself or Greater Kalamazoo. Learners, so we are constantly learning new things, not just learning about art, but we learn about interacting with each other. We learn about our own feelings. We learn what we need to calm ourselves. We learn, we learn what we might need to move on to the next step to challenge ourselves. Inspirers, which I had to look that up to make sure I wasn't making up a word because I'm known for making up words, um, but an inspirer, and I, I wrote it down because it's such a beautiful definition of it. It's a person who makes someone feel that they want to do something and can do it. So think about that. Our artists are inspirers. They make someone else feel that they want to do something and can do it. A great leader and inspirer of people. Peers. So our artists build friendships with each other, friendships with staff. Friends, experts. So we now have artists that have goals to show other artists how to do different techniques. That's a beautiful thing too. When somebody becomes so skilled at a task that they can now show their peer how to do it, again, that feels good to have that knowledge and then to share that knowledge. Novices, we're all learners. And finally, I should put this in bold, important. If I can have my artists leave every single day feeling that they are valued and important, it's a, a day well done. We accomplished so, so, so much. All right, so if my artist can stand, this is, this is my artist. Uh, we've got, you guys can all stand and I'll have you guys raise. And my staff are here too. So we have a couple new artists here today too. Yep, Crystal, you can stand at your chair and I'll just identify them by name. Maybe they can wave if they'd like. We've got Vicki. We have Sharon, we have Danny, we have Jen, we have Crystal. Crystal, you may if you want. We have Victoria. Yeah, we've got Alex. Sarah is one of our staff members helping out today. We've got Bridget. Some of you know Bridget, one of our staff members. We have Zach, Denise, Joan. We've got Maddie, another instructor. We've got Robert, Nick, and Paul. So thank you for having us all today. Thank you guys. So this group of artists, we have artists who are brand new as of today. They just started in our program today. And we have artists who have been here for greater than 10 years. Our artists um, come with a variety of backgrounds family backgrounds, uh, cultural backgrounds, and we really, really do focus on the abilities. I talk about finding the artist's artistic hand. So each artist has their own unique artistic hand. It takes a little bit of time to figure out what that may be, but once we got it, they create their own bodies of work and are drawn to materials that they prefer. 
So this is us on a field trip. Ooh, I'm gonna go back and talk about that piece. Um, so this is, this is one of our artists. He's not present here today. He does drawings after drawings after drawings of figures. And often he'll talk about, it'll represent a family member, but they're just beautiful. They feel like family. And we actually have a collection at Artworks and into our new space where we were able to showcase them in photo frame holders kind of like in display books for uh, graduation photos. So they, they're these really clever pieces. This is one of our recent field trips. So we try and get out and about when we can. My staff are fantastic about exploring with the artists. So this is at Upjohn Park. This was a really special day for me. Uh, as my staff know, and my artists some too, I like to hike. I love nature. I love to pick up things in nature. Uh, I love to explore and be inspired. And all of our artists had that whole sense of exploration that day. A little walk, walk in the park and we were finding feathers, we were finding the smallest little purple flowers, we were finding berries on trees, and we really were inspired by them. One of my artists who is here today had gathered some with him and ended up doing these hand-drawn note cards, beautiful note cards that were directly inspired from that walk and from the nature he found. We do a number of window displays. This is recent. Uh, within the last few years, we've really been very intentional in our displays. We switch out our window displays every two months. They often have encouraging phrases, encouraging colors, encouraging artwork. They might be seasonally, uh, tied. Often they're tied to a theme. This is a window display that was called Bees Are Beautiful. A lot of the materials, I'd say maybe 80% of the materials our artists use are donated from the community, including bags and bags of newspaper. So those flowers uh, are from newspaper that have been painted. And I had a couple artists that were fantastic with tracing out these shapes and then cutting them out. One of my artists is here today. He may not recall because this was an older window display, but he was hands down probably the major player in cutting out those shapes for the flowers. And then what you can't see so well in the photo is there are these little tiny cardboard tubes that artists painted with yellow and black paint. And then we hot glued pop can tabs to them for wings. So those were our bees. We adhered them with glue dots to the window. Full disclosure, don't use glue dots on a window. No, um, so the, the sun will heat them up and they'll fall off. So the bees were falling off the window. And then also it is really difficult to get the residue off. So if you're thinking that that is a good thing, I'm gonna encourage you to try something else. And then again, the artwork on the bottom is all done by our artists to help support that theme. So our artists have an opportunity to create artwork for whatever theme will be on display. So I didn't really share this with the artist in the picture there, um, but this is a fantastic opportunity that when I heard about it, I got goosebumps. There was a local member uh, in Battle Creek who is connected to MRC. Her name is Ada Leanne. She participated in the American Song Contest. As part of that contest, they were asked to bring gifts that represented their state to the hosts. The hosts were Snoop Dogg and Kelly Clarkston. So our, our commission was to create something that represented the Gibson Guitar Factory and something that rec uh, represented the community and growth and inspiration. So Ada gave us an idea of what she wanted and our artists produced these pieces of work. She also had come in and toured the gallery and saw these really cool tote bags that she wanted something to house the artwork in. So within this commission, we were able to have one, two, three, four, five, six, six different artists participate in creating that commission. And those pieces were gifted to uh, Snoop Dogg and Kelly Clarkson. So I really hope they, they were as giddy about it as, as we were. All right, so here's the activity. Again, those at home, if you wish to participate, feel free to in whatever fashion. 
So on your table, there should be enough for four participants at each table. If there isn't enough, feel free to grab one from an empty table. You're going to need, it's a cloth napkin. You're going to need one of these, cloth napkin, and a Sharpie. Yep, and then Danny, if you want to hand some over. Nope, this and this. So cloth, napkin, Sharpie, and there's also white paper. That's just backing paper, so you can put under your cloth napkin just in case the Sharpie goes through. So I'm gonna talk just for a second about my pastime. I hike and I hike a lot. Um, unfortunately, I've been really busy, so I haven't hiked as much, but I truly, I hike a lot. Um, and in the all weather, in the cold weather, your nose runs. And you can go through a lot of disposable Kleenexes if you've got a runny nose. So I ended up having to carry a handkerchief, which I felt pretty cool about. Um, brings me back to my dad, you know, in his business days. But you carry a handkerchief with you. Now, these different hikers sometimes carry handkerchiefs that have different things on them. How to tie certain knots, how to identify plants, how to identify footprints. I wanted to tie that idea with inspiration and encouraging phrases. At Artworks, we're big on creating encouraging phrases either on the artwork, on our sandwich board, or on our window display. So I'm a big quote person. I've got quote books next to my bed. Um, I, I read them often. I have, I've got one in my car. But I'm always grabbing different quotes. And I thought, what a great way to hold on to those quotes in a semi-permanent way and have them handy when I need some encouragement. So as we go through the talk, I'm going to have really quick quotes up there uh, for visual images. And then I might throw a more, a more uh, long, longer quote for you that, that connects with me or connects with the point. So I really want to encourage you guys to capture those thoughts. If you don't want to write down words, if you just want to write down encouraging images, you know, smiley faces, sunshine, flower, um, one of my visual components that I am always encouraged by is finding a feather. You can draw, you know, things that when you find them, you get really excited, like this morning when I found a feather. Uh, but please feel free to use that and carry it through the entire presentation. As we go through, there will be moments, breaks, where you can write down those encouraging thoughts and quotes. Like right here. So this is a couple pieces of artwork our artist had done. We've got hope, and we have love yourself. So the hope piece, that was a number of pieces that we had done this abstract series. And then the love yourself, we do just these small four by six or five by seven canvases, quick encouraging pieces of art that people often pick up to gift. So you could write down either of those ideas. Full disclosure, from a traditional art background where, again, I do a lot of photo representational art. When I first came into artworks, I was like, I don't know about words on artwork. I don't know if that's really, is that artwork? Now I can't get away from it because we need to recognize different, different approaches to art. And sometimes what can be in a feeling, in an image, can more quickly be expressed to somebody with that word. And there's value in that too. So this is a rock that says better together. There's a series of work that our staff and artists are supporting where, again, we were gifted a couple big bags, Harding's bags of magazines. And we really try and use everything we have. So we do these rocks that I find or my staff find and our artists paint them. They'll use up their remaining paint and then often they'll add something to them. And a quote that I have, and I'm not attributing my quotes to um, any specific, the, a quote book that I've gravitated towards recently, they don't attribute the quotes because they're just carried down. But we see things not as they are, but as we are. So we choose how we see things. And often that choice of how we see is built into our experiences. And I encourage you to have experiences with a diverse group of people because it changes how you see things. It changes what you gravitate towards. Where we are. So 
So we're downtown Kalamazoo, as Greg mentioned, 330 South Burdick, we're 330 South Kalamazoo Mall, we're 328 South Kalamazoo Mall, because now we're expanding, I'll highlight that in a moment. We're in additional businesses as well. We're at OneWell, Resilience Chiropractic. We're in a number of homes. A number of homes have little mini galleries of our artist work. It's always fun to hear that. Worldwide, so we've had visitors from all over the world that come in and we share about our program and they'll purchase a, a piece or a couple pieces. And we have a social media presence. Uh, this picture, one of our artists, we use up all of our materials, including our bottles of paint. So even what seems like an empty bottle of paint, we'll water it down and use that up. So this artist does a lot more open-ended art. And so she was dripping that. You can also see a quote in the back. Colors are the smiles of nature. We take some field trips. We go for walks. Our artists walk down here today. We have some wholesalers. These are banners that were part of a recent window display last fall, I believe. Again, hand sewn felt. Our studio and gallery is open Monday through Friday. Our artists come in 845 until 245. It is a work day and we treat it as a work day. So we've got two breaks and a lunch. We have scheduled days, so if an artist is scheduled on Monday, they come in every Monday. If they're scheduled Tuesday, Thursday, every Tuesday, Thursday. We have open gallery hours, so we're open to the community from 9 to 3, 9 to 4. We encourage anyone to come on in and see what we do. And then we have special events as well. Art Hop, Small Business Saturday. So these are some examples of field trips and art shows. The image on the left is our display at Bellflower. If you haven't been to Bellflower, it's a sweet little venue off of Diab there. They did a Michigan Makers Fair, Craft Fair the other weekend. So we had a display there. On the right hand are images of our artists. See if you guys can recognize where that's at. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, it's here at the KIA. So our artists were able to, um, to borrow some seating and take inspiration from the work that they had seen and, and sketch what they had seen. On the left-hand side are some images of work from Vicksburg Public Library. We do rotating art displays with some of our venues. So about every quarter or so, we'll switch out with new work. On the right hand side is two years ago, our contribution to the Portage Winter Card Walk. No, that was actually last year. I was thinking of another image. So this was actually last year's card. So um, fun, fun little note, the card itself, it's plywood of course, uh, but we were given, it was called glitter paste. And there's a number of products I don't like. One is glitter, fan brushes, fake flowers, and mustache birds. Uh, my, my artists know that, my staff know that. So <laughs> glitter paste I was really on the fence about, but if we're gonna have to use glitter, at least it's sealed in some kind of glue, glue material. But we got boxes and boxes of it. So we were able to use up a couple boxes worth on this board. And this board that was already kind of substantial in weight, was ridiculously heavy after it was covered in glitter paste. Uh, we have Rio listed up here. Rio is one of our wholesalers. So they purchase items our artists create and then show them at their, their business. Imperial Beverage, they've created this beautiful little display up their stairwell again, rotating every quarter. Taco Bob's downtown, and then Friendship Village Rehab Center. I mentioned One Well and Resilience. Recently, we started a partnership with Custer that's at the top of the exchange building. They do a small little grouping of our work there. Water Street also does wholesale with us, and this is a bookstore and book bug. So please support these businesses 
Uh, they are fantastic contributors to the community. This is another one of our window displays. The quote is, waves of change, in waves of change, we find our true direction. So that was the theme. It was, it was based on a series of work that our artists still do. And then this image was actually, actually captured by another Instagram follower called Laughing at Clouds. And it's just such a fun image that I had to share it here too. It's in the photo, yeah. But the question from the audience was, is that dog part of the picture? And they were in the photo. Um, we like to always represent our love for Kalamazoo. We truly feel connected to the community. We feel appreciated. We feel respected. So we try and share that love back. So Kalamazoo Rock. And then these really fun cards. These uh, cards, we, again, a material that was donated to us was like a watercolor resist. So it came out in this fluid pen. And we have boxes and boxes of that as well. So coming up with clever ways to use it up. These are after the fact words of encouragement our artists have put out to the community. So these were hanging, they were uh, shipping tags. They were done by our artists and they were hanging on one of the trees outside. So it saw many rainy days. I don't think it saw any snow, but then after they got weathered to such a point, we brought them in. And even in that weathered look, there's some beauty to it. So this is another chance you can take if you'd like to add anything to your handkerchief of encouraging phrases or encouraging images. I'll pause for a moment for you to do so if you wish. For our home audience, some of our uh, participants are just clarifying what the tags say. Okay, I'll move on from here. So what we create, so what do we create at Artworks? Uh, in the image are two coloring sheets. If we have downtime between tasks or waiting for paint to dry, there is really nothing um, more boring than waiting for paint to dry. So we often will have just coloring sheets or other side projects. A lot of times those wholesale items, those cards, bookmarks, magnets are done during that time if they're working on a painting and we need some dry time. But right here are some pants and some shoes. That was from another project, inspiration from another project. So what our artists create are paintings, jewelry, cards, Textiles, so that includes knit products, crocheted products, sewn products. They're inspired, so they're inspired by what they see. They might be inspired by friends and family, inspired by their interests. I have an artist here who's a food aficionado, so a lot of his paintings are based on food. They're original, and then we have some commissions as well. So we try and be as supportive as we can if somebody comes in with an idea of something they like created, we try our best to accommodate. Okay, good. So the materials we use, we upcycle a lot of items, we repurpose a lot of items, we thrift a lot of items, we take donated items and we take surplus items. So in that image there, you see sticks, um, so those sticks were gathered by one of our staff as well as uh, myself, a little background, um, and it probably attributes to my love for nature. I lived in the western UP for seven years, about as far west in the UP before you actually end up in Wisconsin. So when we were moving back down here to Kalamazoo, 
I was getting taken away from what I determined is the greatest of the Great Lakes, Lake Superior. And Lake Superior always has a lot of driftwood. So in our, in our uh, moving truck that was really, really packed tight, I made sure to grab not one, not two, not three, but four bins of driftwood. So as I held on to that driftwood for many years, I shared some of it with our artists. Inspiration will come from current trends. A lot of our inspiration comes from excess material. One of the projects that we have coming up here um, is from excess material, trying to use what we have in a creative, saleable way. It comes from masters, so from known and, and lesser known artists. A lot of what we do is happy accidents. I have actually um, something I will gift our participants today that was a happy accident. I'll show you real quick. So on your table, you'll have these and I'll discuss them in a moment. But this was a happy accident um, where I ended up printing feathers onto a project that was not working out. <laughs> so we really try and use what we have without discarding it. And we're inspired by the world around us. For a time during the pandemic, we provided telehealth services, so virtual services to a small group of artists where our instructors met via camera and audio, and we explored artists with art kits. And we chose different artists to learn from, try, and then produce art from. Some of those were Van Gogh, Degas, Scully, um, but we really, we try and gravitate to whatever we have and make the most of it. We use fresh cut flowers. This is like a visual reminder for me. So for a while there, I was bringing in a lot of fresh cut flowers or fruit. I believe strongly in drawing from life just for practicing skill. Uh, so you can really understand the shape of something if you can see it in the 3D. Also, it brings life, life and color to our studio space. So for a while there, we were having a lot of fresh cut flowers. Rosa Sharon, I've got a number of bushes, so those came from there. The sunflowers came from this little, little place on one of the highways. So what else can we learn? What else can we learn? We can learn awareness, awareness of even personal space, awareness of where we're at on a project, responsibility. We teach responsibility of materials. So how to be respectful to even the materials. I use a lot of power tools. And one of the things my grandfather told me is the moment I stop respecting the power tool, I'm going to get hurt. Now, fortunately, we don't use so many power tools, but there is a level of respect. Brushes, if we don't put them in the water, we learn really quick that they dry out and we can't really use them. We learn respect for each other. We learn respect for staff. We learn respect for customers. So what does that look like? What does that sound like? Being open to suggestions, being open to feedback. Often our artists, when they're done with a project, they go around and they ask other artists, what do you think of this? Or does it need anything else? It doesn't mean that they have to accept that feedback. It just means having that conversation and being open to consider it. Appreciation, so in reverse, the, the artists who get to view that artwork when somebody goes around gets to say, oh, that looks really good. Oh, that's awesome. Resiliency, resiliency is something that we need to grow and, and practice and exercise our entire life. There will be moments every single day that may bring us down. But if we learn how to calm ourselves and we do that through our creation, then we can apply that kind of knowledge into our life. Self-assurance. So knowing, hey, I'm really good at sewing, I can do this. Problem solving. So we encourage problem solving. The language might sound like, you know, how can you solve that problem? So a lot of times we'll ask them, think on it, try something to solve the problem. And if you still need help, come to us and we'll help you solve the problem. And trial and error. There's no greater way to try something and fail at something than an art creation. Another one of our window displays, and I got a uh, joke about this one. It's supposed to say art is chaos taking shape, but in reflection, it kind of reads 
art is taking chaos shape, which I think works too. It's totally fine. It's, I know, right? Totally fine. So this again was excess materials. These are, um, the image is a little bit harder to see, but they're cardboard scraps and uh, framing scraps that our artists painted. The two larger pieces in the center, we actually applied those to the West Michigan Area Show last year. And it was, again, just a compilation of all their work into a couple group pieces. I'm gonna pause again. If you'd like to write down any of these quotes, you may onto your uh, handkerchief. So do something creative every day. And you can't use up creativity. The more you use, the more you have. That one's Maya. And on a personal quote that I collected, my part is to improve the present moment. So there's a level of consciousness that you're responsible for if you want to claim that quote, right? And that is an area of growth for myself, is to be conscious in the present moment. There's a lot on my plate as a mother, right? As a full-time worker, as an artist. And often I'm already on my next to-do list. But part of that creativity journey is you have to be present in that moment in order to create what you're creating. All right, what we learned. So here's another opportunity for you to create art. So it's, it's scratch art. If you notice in the bottom, uh, bottom kind of right hand corner, there's a cat. So scratch art, it's kind of a pun, I think. But on your uh, area, I'll get you guys started on it right now. So I'll keep talking as you go. You will have this, it's a barbecue skewer and you'll have a black sheet of paper. So you will need one barbecue skewer and one black sheet of paper. So for our participants at home, um, I'll talk, you guys, talk to you guys about the process. This is photo paper that a lot of us received when we bought new printers back, what, 10 years ago? They gave you all these Epson cartridges and photo paper. Well, a lot of us, myself included, did not use those up and we were donated a bunch. I donated some. So what we learned we could do is you rub crayon on that photo paper and then you can paint over it and use it as scratch art later. So I'm gonna encourage you guys to just do designs, squiggles, however you like on that. And you can um, you know, create images, you could create words. It's a little hard to carry that skewer to create words, but feel free to just practice mark making as we talk about at Artworks. We do a lot of practice of mark making. Mark making, yes. So here is a MRC Artworks creative process. So the creative process, it's in a circular fashion. The idea is an artist can jump in at any point, they could jump out, but there's no right way, there's no start, there's no end. But we include in our creative process, inspiration, so ideas, research, imagination. We do some planning, what materials we need, sketching it, discussing it. We create, so we gotta try. Sometimes we gotta use a little more patience, sometimes less. We're open to suggestions. We love challenging ourselves. And then there's some component of talking, however that may be. But we have some feedback, some positives, some input, ways to improve. And there's that professionalism again. So we are professional. So the importance of soft skills. I talk, I give tours to potential artists or to networking opportunities. And I talk about our soft skills and I say these three things, patience, persistence, and problem solving. So that's big every single day. All the work we do is about being patient, persisting at the task, and problem solving. All of our artists have goals and objectives that they work on. So they choose what they want to work on, how they're going to get there, and then us as staff, we do interventions. So we help support them. Our role is not to create the artwork for them. Our role is to support them on their goals and objectives. 
There's mutual respect. We have the joy of experimenting. There is no greater job I've had where I get to just mess with material and see what happens because we make it work. Whatever it is, we end up making it work. We have a lot of happy accidents. If you visit us at Artworks, you will see that we have Bob Ross on the door. Um, so my artists helped paint that a few, a few years ago. And then what I love to hear that just makes my day is hearing an artist say, I can, or I did it, or I will. If, if we can approach something like I can do that, or look at that, I did that, or oh yeah, I'll, I'll do that, I will. Those are fantastic for their whole journey. Here's another window display. This is based on Kusama. So in our telehealth, we had explored Kusama and her installations and her patterning and her dot making. Somebody had donated lots of jeans, like 20 pairs of blue jeans. I'm not sure why we got 20 pairs of blue jeans. And it seems like we keep getting more blue jeans. But we, in our telehealth program, had our artists stamp on them. And they became these beautiful pieces of artwork, functional, wearable artwork. Um, one of our attendees here today, I know, owns a pair. Uh, and we still have some available in our program as well. So it's wear your, wear your jeans with pride, another pun there. Um, and then, uh, of course, the circles. The circles themselves, those uh, circles on each of them had an encouraging word that our artist chose. So it might be happy or strong or joy. But they wrote words so that if somebody peered in a little closer, they could capture a word. So activity two, you all are already engaged with that. Again, the magic of upcycling. So it's kind of kind of a little youthful approach. I'm sure we've all in our childhood maybe done scratch art. And if you want to add anything to your handkerchief, here's a couple more quotes. A beautiful day begins with a beautiful mindset. One of my artists who's in attendance has pointed out that the impossible is just an opinion. Mine. That's Nick. Nick's saying mine right now. So impossible is just an opinion. Thank you. And an additional quote, the more difficult the obstacle, the stronger one becomes after hurdling it. I got to watch my 14 year old participate in track and I cannot believe these kids that can hurdle. They, they run these hurdles like effortless. Yeah. All right, now the who we connect with. So again, some tote bags that our artists did. So we have a variety of venues. We already talked about some of the different businesses that show our work. We have donors, so either donors behind the scene that have helped financially, or we have donors that drop off bags of recycled items. Um, side note, we've received extra cutoffs of wood, and we've even put those to work, like pieces from people's fences. I'm not saying bring me your fence that you take apart, but I'm saying we can really utilize whatever is given to us. We do art hops and we have art patrons. It's fun to see people come back and I start recognizing them. I, it's even more fun if I can remember what piece of artwork they bought. We do field trips. We take donation materials. We are now part of this all means all group. It is through Michigan Arts Access. We participate once a month in this virtual meeting where artists and art organizations from across Michigan connect and inspire each other. Uh, talk about what they do and get to showcase their talents. So we, we participated in that a week or so ago, and it was our turn to show what we could do. We've been fortunate to be supported by the local media. So we've had some feature articles, Good News put out an article about us, MLive, Public Media Network popped in on Art Hop Night. And then we have tours. Sometimes we have scheduled tours, sometimes we have just pop-in tours. There's one of our artists in the good news article. I'm going to point out there's a little Easter egg there. So there's something in that image that you'll see later in the presentation. 
There is another one of our window displays. So together we can create a better tomorrow. So we've tried to make some window displays that encourages the participation of community members so they can stop and take a selfie or stop and take a group photo. And another quote opportunity, courage, dear heart. Nick's, that's Nick's art to see our participants at home now he's raising his hand. And an important quote, just as advocates for others, uh, somebody had brought this up to me a number of years ago, and it, it's one of the few things I remember. I don't retain things very well. I can't speak to the why necessarily, but I do have a hard time retaining things. But this quote, I do retain. Speak truth even if your voice shakes. So going with that courage, but speak truth even if your voice shakes. And then on that note, speak up even if you must talk above the crowd. So if you have to go against the crowd, talk up, speak up. All right, and how we give back. So we have a series of work that a number of our artists do, probably about 20 different artists create these little critters, these figures, these animals. This one, I think, is a tomato. So our artists do free found art, like those tags that were shown earlier in the presentation. We're big on using up paint or using excess material and encouraging joy in the community. So we leave it around like the rocks or like the tags, or we had, we had tulips out at one point. I think I have a photo of that. So if we have excess, as a volunteer opportunity for our artists, they're welcome to create a little thing that somebody else can have to encourage their day. We have um, a local coffee shop that we get their, their carriers and we use up our paint on that and give them back to her. And the owner kind of distributes them to individuals that she can see needs a little cheer. So rather than the ordinary coffee carrier, she'll give them a painted one. We donate paintings to other nonprofits. We model techniques to visitors, so it's kind of fun when somebody comes in and they're curious about what we do, we show them what we do. As MRC Industries itself and some of our artists participate in, there are volunteer sites that our participants do go and help at. And again, we're very conscious of including encouraging messages as often as we can. This was a recent window display. It was about peace and love and hope. There were hearts dangling in the window and our next activity is tied to that idea. So when we complete a window display, everything comes down and it's bittersweet. We know we're losing out on a great image, but we're gonna have something fun come up. Um, so when the, the window display came down, we gifted those hearts to community members, anybody that came in and needed something, including these yarn hearts. So at your tables um, and our participants at home, we have pipe cleaners that are just wrapped into a heart shape. And then you have yarn that you can wrap around the pipe cleaner. When you get to the end, you're welcome to tie it off. But my encouragement is to not keep this but to gift it to somebody else that might need encouragement. And, and we just try our best. To be honest, when I've wrapped them before, they have not looked so pretty. <laughs> so out of uh, time consciousness, I'm gonna not speed through the rest, but we have about five more minutes until our end time. So I wanna be respectful to that. I know on the live stream, I could go over maybe five minutes. So I'm gonna give that five minutes to Q&A. So I'm gonna try and complete our presentation in the next five. So those are those tulips I was mentioning. Um, so Wenke does Good Neighbor Days and they donate flowers to nonprofits. I encourage you if you're attached to a nonprofit to look into that, but their goal is to brighten up the community around them. So how we are growing, we've got really exciting news. We are expanding our program. 
So at our MRC Industries location over on 26th Street, they are partnering with MSU Extension and doing a gardening program over there. We have a new program over there called Woodworks. They take pallet wood, they rip it apart, they cut it down, they finish it off, and they create other items, crates, planter boxes. As I mentioned previously, we are expanding our site. We're increasing our venues. I was joking that I had an opportunity to use a company van and it was like giving keys to a 16 year old. Like I just see so many opportunities for us to go explore other places and tours and field trips. These are pictures of our new space in case you're not able to come join us uh, for our grand opening. Our grand opening is this Friday, four o'clock. I know it's a very busy time with art in the park, art on the mall, art hop. But four o'clock at 328 South Kalamazoo Mall, come join us as we celebrate our expansion. There will be snacks. There's a flyer for that. Here's a couple more quotes. I know your hands are busy wrapping yarn. When you focus on the good, the good gets better and life is messy. I don't think I own a piece of clothing except maybe this dress that does not have paint on it. I was painting last night two different outfits. I ended up changing out of one outfit. Both outfits now have paint on them. And if you're just prepared that that is part of who you are, then life is messy and that's a good thing. Uh, one of our artists said, doing art, if you didn't get dirty, you didn't do it right. So how can you be included? So I challenge our viewers at home. I challenge our participants here, how they might be able to be included. So we're looking for guest artists. We're looking for volunteers. You can donate materials. We have had fundraise opportunities. Jericho did a fundraising opportunity for us. We can have you invite others to our location. Like, hey, I know this really cool gallery. It's something totally different. Come check it out. Uh, you can visit or just engage with us. Come on in and and have a conversation. This is our wish list. So these are supplies that we can always use more of, we use often. Pretty much all the things that you see for the back to school sales, which I know it's end of school year, but those sales start usually July. Um, so anything that's on those back to school sales, we could use. Often I'm there grabbing up markers and glue sticks. And we like to express our thankfulness. So this is a couple of our artists holding a recent thank you note. These are other examples of our thank you notes. So those people that are our supporters, our advocates that help us, we try and give them a thank you note expressing our gratitude. The art of thank you note writing is getting lost. Um, a little funny side note, my mom is queen of thank you notes. I'm sure she has them prepped for if I give her anything. And the funniest thing was um, a lady had given her a can of soup and she made sure she got that thank you note out. So we try and express our thankfulness and um, in original art forms too. So if you receive a thank you note from us, KIA recently did as well, it's usually its own form of art. So this is a shout out to the KIA. Again, we appreciate the inclusion of us. We really do resonate with out front that art is for everyone. We do feel that. And a couple of final thoughts. I'm just another dot in the world. That's a Kusama quote. And be kind. One of our artists asked who Kusama was. Um, so before you go, uh, we have a gift for you. Each of our artists has a shirt that was uh, painted 
It's a cardboard shirt that they can gift to any participant who's here. Um, and then I also have a couple things. So uh, there are pocket clouds, a little background on pocket clouds. Often when I'm caught up in the chaos of this world, I look up and I see that the clouds keep moving without any concern for really anything else. They're at the control and mercy of the wind and they shift and they grow and they break apart, but they just keep moving forward. So often I gift people pocket clouds for them to keep in their pocket. So if they're having a hard moment, they can look at that and remember to look up and keep on moving. Here's our contact info. So you know where to find us. We're on mrcindustries.org is our website. We're on Facebook at MRC Industries Incorporated. We're on Instagram at MRC Artworks. So finally, thank you for your love and support. And there is the Easter egg, if you remember seeing it before. Tomorrow is heavy. You should put it down. Yeah. Thank you for your time. Um, I welcome any questions you might have.